Now, who is an Olympics for? Is it for the fans who make this a success? Is it for the host country who tried to create an impression on the world watching? Or is it for the athletes, the ones who give everyone involved the most memorable moments? Not much argument in there. Athletes make the tournament what it is. So if the athletes fuel a tournament, why are they being forced to compromise? That's what this Olympics is beginning to look like. Athletes being forced to compromise on their sleep, being provided the narrowest cardboard beds. Athletes forced to compromise on their food, providing meals that is in keeping with what the organizers want to give and not what the players want to consume. The days have led to food shortage, toilet paper scarcity, lack of air conditioning to sleep deprivation due to uncomfortable uncom mattresses. Forcing Italian swimmer, Thomas Kichon, who won a gold medal at the 100-meter backstroke event to sleep outside the Olympics village. Now, that's a picture taken of him in deep slumber, something many athletes have been depraved of, a good night's sleep. The most basic requirement, and that isn't all, from poor refereeing to a gender row where an Algerian boxer has been bullied, it seems that athletes at Paris have fought more mental battles off the field than they had to on the field. But wait till you hear this. The latest is of an athlete who's fallen sick after a swim in the River Seine. Belgium triathlete Claire Michel fell ill after completing, competing in the women's triathlon event. Michel was hospitalized and treated for an E. coli infection. E. coli, a bacteria that can cause serious intestinal and medical concern, how is it transmitted? Through contaminated food or contaminated water that makes its way into the digestive tract via the mouth. Michelle fell sick right after her swim in the River Seine and that forced Belgium to pull out of the mixed triathlon event. Now, while the Belgium authorities didn't blame River Seine's pollution levels for Michelle's sickness, the truth is Michelle isn't the only athlete who fell ill after swimming in the river, highlighting a potential hazard for anyone swimming in River Seine. Before Michelle, Switzerland's Adrian Brefort had a stomach infection. This after Brefort competed in the men's triathlon event. He too pulled out of the mixed triathlon events thereafter. A Canadian triathlete, Tyler Mislochuk, got sick and threw up 10 times. Not a pretty sight. And not something you want to experience right in the middle of the most important tournament in your life. So it's not just one athlete. Many of the triathletes and those who swam in the river have had serious illnesses to combat, leading me to believe that the river sign was indeed not swimmable. Pretty, pretty enough to be a tourist and ride on a yacht and take in the sights and sounds, sure, but not safe enough to be an athlete and swim in. Confirming this fact was Belgium triathlete Julian Vermeulen, who was part of the women's triathlon event. Can't say safety of athletes is a priority. While swimming under the bridge, I felt and saw things that we shouldn't think about too much. The Seine has been dirty for a hundred years, so they can't say that the safety of the athletes is a priority. I took probiotics. I had the idea of not drinking water, but yes, IT failed. They couldn't cancel the race completely either. Now they just have to hope that there won't be too many sick athletes. They have to hope there aren't too many sick athletes. Vermeulen's clearly saying that those who swam in the river felt something was just wasn't right. And picture the predicament of the athletes for a second here. You have to swim through a river that doesn't feel right. And if you stop, you're affecting the chances of your team, your country winning a medal. And think about it, a river where public swimming has been banned for over a century. How could it be squeaky clean so soon? Despite France's more than a billion dollar investments on the cleanliness front, it is fair to say the river failed to deliver. Before the men's and women's triathlon events took place, the practice sessions, in fact, were cancelled. The organisers, though, went ahead and conducted the main events in the fear of backlash coming in from all quarters of them having to cancel events at the Games. But they didn't think it would take an ugly turn with athletes falling sick. Despite this calamity, the mixed relay event went ahead as planned, despite the practice sessions to those also being called off due to high toxin levels in the water. Clearly, the toxin levels in the water did not miraculously fall a day later for the event to take place. So safe to say, player safety was compromised. In an attempt to save face, Morgan Pearson highlighted that organizers could have invested more in having a clean water rather than cleaning the already dirty water. 
His competitor, Tim Helwig, talked about how such chaos dis disrupts the performance of the athlete. And the Belgium Federation, who had to pull out of the events, went a step further and said, I hope the lessons will be learned for the future events. And even after the triathlon was conducted, the authorities went ahead and called off the practice sessions for the marathon event. That is still left to be conducted and this time the organisers didn't even give a reason. What started off as a nostalgic need to create a beautiful panoramic event, swimming in River Seine, has resulted in a debacle that could snowball if federations of other countries decide to speak up. Even if they don't, I have to ask, why was Paris so ill-prepared in this count? Second, why could an alternate plan not have been thought out earlier? And third, and most important, how could they compromise athletes' safety? An answer to all those questions point to an episode that has caused a dent to the image of Paris and Paris Olympics. Climate change is on our doorstep. It's time for a revolution to take root. And it starts with 1.4 billion Indians. It starts with one tree. One tree for humanity. One tree for Mother Earth. One tree for our future. Project One Tree, a News 18 network initiative. Across continents, one powerful news source. Bringing you diverse perspectives on the issues that matter. We go beyond the boundaries to give you that little extra about every sporting moment. So thank you for making First Post 5 million strong. We're counting on your support and you can trust us to bring you the news unfiltered and unvarnished.